Starting your Sunday with WCIA 3 News. You're watching a special edition of This Morning, Remembering Robert. Good morning, I'm Jacob Dickey. Today is Sunday, October 9th. Welcome to WCIA 3 This Morning. Ten years ago, it was a day of loss for Central Illinois. A beloved icon lost a hard and courageous battle with cancer. Robert Reese left behind many who loved him, both on television and in person. He was a dad, a brother, a husband, and a grandfather. But for thousands and thousands of people, he was an inspiration, a role model, and a friend. Robert's passion for weather went far beyond the TV screen. He made an impact in countless lives through his humor, his kindness, and with his public battle with cancer. This morning, we'll spend the full hour honoring Robert's life, looking back at the impact he had in the hearts and minds of many, and exploring his legacy 10 years later as we spend time remembering Robert. When Robert first passed away, the sadness was immense across central Illinois. But Robert was a positive person with a bright spirit. Those memories live on even today. Our Jennifer Roscoe takes a look back at the life of Robert and the impact he had right here at Channel 3. And now, meteorologist Robert Reese with Storm Tracker Weather. For years, Robert told us when to wear a coat. We're likely to see some showers and thunderstorms developing. When to take cover. And when a tornado warning has been issued for your area and you know a storm's approaching your home, it's important to take cover quickly. And when to drive with the top down. Joe, another beautiful day for central Illinois with lots of sunshine. He started back in 1998. His first co-anchor was Gabriel Martin. No on-air personal, on personality or off-air personality. That was Robert. You could tell immediately how much he cared about getting our viewers the information they needed. Judy Fraser worked side by side with Robert for more than a decade. When it came to the serious business of weather casting, um, there was no one to compare. He was validated, he was credible, he was respected um, by everyone, including me. But he was more than just a weatherman. His love for the funny came through right away. <laughs> the Isa monkey bunny. Yeah. Good call, Robert. Bumpy, kitty. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Looney. Well, he was not afraid to say anything. We, you know, we can't stress enough. We don't want you to do that. Wear anything. Or in his Robert on the Road segments, try anything. Maybe today's liver is better. Maybe my tastes have changed. And maybe leprechauns will wax my car. This stuff is awful. He would truly do anything for a friend. He came to a hootie hoo date with me one time, and he said to me, I cannot believe I'm doing this. <laughs> What he did do was bring happiness to people there who didn't go. always have it. And these guys have been warming up for the last half hour over here, so, <laughs> so they're good at it. He hosted MDA telethons and visited camp because he knew how much it meant to the kids. He just had a knack of drawing them out because he was funny. He had that magic camaraderie, that elixir that made people open up. And that was true of anyone he met. You were a friend for life. You were the most important person in the room. And if you weren't laughing, Robert hadn't done his job. I don't think he understood the impact that he had on people throughout Central Illinois. Coming up on the show this morning, as we spend time remembering Robert, we'll hear from some who got to spend time with Robert both on air and off air, and we'll reach back into the vault to hear stories from Robert Reese. Also, coming up later, we'll have an update on your weekend forecast as we continue to spend time remembering Robert 10 years later. This morning, remembering Robert continues now on WCIA 3. I'm Robert Reese, and this is my buddy Dylan. And I'm Mandel. Join us along with Judy Frazier and Jennifer Hendricks for the 2004 MDA Telethon. It's Labor Day weekend, and it's to help Jerry's kids. The MDA Telethon, September 5th and 6th on WCIA3. Robert was more than a meteorologist. 
He had a passion for being involved in the community and helping those around him. Even up to his final days, he continued to put others before himself. We sat down with some of those who saw Robert in action, whether it was helping out in the newsroom, giving time for those in need, or visiting schools across the region to meet with kids. Robert was an exceptional man, both on air and off air. Who was he to me? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Who was Robert to me? Uh, first and foremost, uh, a friend. Where do you start with uh, Robert Reese? Uh, unbelievable guy, great friend of mine. You know, I'm just thankful uh, every day that God put me in his path because I think I'm a better person for having been with Robert Reese on the air and been a friend with him off the air. He was so genuine it, and that was it. He just, he let his personality shine through and come through and he was real. Robert was just someone that was so easy to get along with. The, the first time I met him when he finished his interview with Dave Shaw and he came out of the office and I immediately gave him a little grief because he grew up in Arcola, I grew up in Tuscola and I'm like, ah, who wins all the cola wars? And he said, yes, but who has more football championships? You knew he liked you if he messed with you. So you really kind of just had to be on your toes all the time with Robert. He was someone I looked up to. It wasn't, he wasn't Robert Reese on TV. He was Robert. <laughs> Robert was great to work with. Uh, just a guy that really, he was passionate about his job, but also just made it so much fun. To, to come to work every day. And it was just so nice to have somebody that was just so easy to work with. He made coming to work so much fun. We all connected with him. There's not one person who didn't like Robert. His four children were everything to him. He just doted on them and was so proud of each and every one of them. Um, family was huge. He loved spending time with those kids. There was nothing more exciting for him than to get off work, the weather's good, to go home, hang around the pool, take the kids there, play with the kids. He makes me want to be better. He makes me, he's the reason I wake up every morning, I go to class, I'm getting my master's degree now. He's the inspiration for that. Make, I just want to make sure he's proud of me when he's looking down on me. And... He loved family time, he loved cars, um, loved playing with the kids, going to their sporting events. He was always there. I remember he, was, he would always come home, check how we were doing and whatnot, and it was just, this is always a good thing to have in a, in a father. In a father, it was making sure the family was okay, that mom was doing all right, the kids were all right as well. I wake up in the morning, think about him, think about him before I go to sleep. Robert was a skilled meteorologist, a great mentor, a family man, a leader for the news team, and so much more. He was someone who always brought joy to those around him. Coming up, we'll look at some of those joyful moments Robert had on air, and hear stories from behind the scenes. That's coming up as we continue to remember Robert 10 years later. You're watching This Morning, Remembering Robert on WCIA3. Robert Reese, with a forecast you can trust. As, as a meteorologist, I want to be able to provide them with accurate weather information. Caring for your well-being. When we have severe weather, you, know, you want to get the warnings out, you want to get them out quickly, you want to get them out accurately. And, the potential to maybe save somebody's life or property. Enjoying working for you. My goal is to work where I'm working. It really is a good job. Robert Reese on WCIA3, your news leader. For Robert, working at Channel 3 was a dream job. Born and raised in Arcola, Robert knew the people. He got to tell the stories of Central Illinois, and he had a lot of fun doing so. We sat down with family, co-workers, and friends of Robert to hear just a few of the many stories from his life. Robert Reese is a goofball. Robert was the ultimate prankster. I remember when Robert and Rob Collins decided to put uh, dry ice in the men's urinals. We would take it to the men's urinal, put it in there, and then hide outside around the corner for unsuspecting people to come in. As the sales staff was showing up and using the restroom, well, polarity ensued. You know, when a warm stream hits dry ice, the reaction that happens, Robert and I were around the corner just laughing like schoolgirls. Yeah, if he thought he could get away with sticking a whoopee cushion on someone's seat, he'd totally do it. Every day he had a joke for me. Every single day we worked together. And some days he couldn't even get his coat off fast enough to come over and regale me with these funny stories. He introduced me to like 70s music that wasn't disco. <laughs> 
because I, I was in this weird position, like I kind of grew up with 80s music, but like my parents were into 60s, like, and he's introducing me to like the Allman Brothers and the Doobie Brothers and like, you know, other good 70s music, but I had no clue. They also one time took a, one of those balloons where you have a little pinch spot and when you pinch it, it plays music. And they took that part off. And we duct taped it to the toilet seat in the bathroom. So when everyone would go in, and sit down to use the bathroom, the weight of their body would start that music and they'd be looking around going, what is going on again? We'd be around the corner just dying laughing like schoolgirls. I have never loved the Doobie Brothers more. A huge find for me. <laughs> like, I love the Doobie Brothers now. And that's Robert, that's 100% that's Robert. His funeral is the only funeral I've ever been to that had rock and roll music playing. He loved On the Road, and that was a great way to show his personality and the jokester side. That trip to Moonshine was fantastic. I mean, can you imagine loading up a bus of viewers, people you've never met before, going to a tiny place in central Illinois? Moonshine is a couple hours south from here, but what a landmark, what a, you know, so many people have heard of it and he got to go down there and experience it firsthand. Honestly, I feel like he did those stories not so much for the news value, but more for the free food. Um, I mean, he liked to eat. And he just brought that whole experience to people because it's not just you go there and have a hamburger, you have to be in line. And if they run out before you get served, well, you're out of luck. We did the telethon together along with Judy. So Judy and Robert and I did the Labor Day Muscular Dystrophy Jerry Lewis Telethon. Um, and the care that he had for the kids and the families affected by muscular dystrophy uh, really cut to his heart. I think that's where on TV a lot with weather you saw the goofball side of Robert, but the Labor Day Telethon is where he got serious. So many good stories there. Now we thought there's no greater way to continue sharing the stories of Robert than to pull one of his favorite stories out from the vault. Here's Robert on the road to Moonshine. Moonshine, Illinois is in southern Clark County, roughly between Casey and Martinsville. But don't try and find it on a map that's been printed in the last 40 years because it's not there. It was back in the 50s. It was on the map. Why it was taken off, I don't know, but you can't find them on the maps now. <laughs> Walking into the Moonshine store is like taking a trip back in time. Heck, just being outside is a trip back in time. Well, I come up in 1982 in February to see about getting it. So I bought it in 1982, come up, started the first day of March. Been here ever since. They can't get rid of me. While it's still technically a country store, it's become famous for one thing. <laughs> Well, if it's the first time of coming, we tell you a hamburger or cheeseburger. I suppose cheeseburger is about the most popular. And what makes them so good? It's good meat and it's cooked on a cast iron grill. Now when you come to the Moonshine store for lunch, don't expect to sit at a table because there aren't any. You're going to sit on a bench and you better have your lunch ordered by 1230 or you're not going to get it. We got here in time to try the best cheeseburger, we're told, in the world. Everyone who's had one says these are the best cheeseburgers in the world. I had to find out. Can't say it's the best in the world, but it's the best I've had. But people come for more than just the food. Conversation, and you can learn a lot at Moonshine. <laughs> Good place for gossip. You gotta check out the gossip. In the short time we were at Moonshine, I met several new friends, and you can too when you're on the road. Now, there are so many more stories to share of Robert. We'll post many more of those on our website, WCI.com, throughout the rest of this month. Up next, we'll see what Robert does best. Give a forecast during his time in the morning show. And a little later, Robert's passion for storms first got him to Channel 3. We'll take a look at Robert's love for weather. That's coming up as we continue spending time remembering Robert 10 years later. We'll be right back. I'm Robert Reese in the Storm Tracker Weather Center. Our warming trend continues today, even warmer than yesterday, but not as warm as tomorrow. Today we're going to top out around 50. We'll talk about how long this warm spell is going to last and see when we have our next chances of rain and or snow. Coming up when I have weather on the threes.
Good morning. It's 6.33 and time for another check of Storm Tracker weather on the threes here on the morning show. Let's take a look at our Storm Tracker radar, which is showing a little bit of light rain in the southern part of our viewing area, just south of Effingham, mainly along and south of Interstate 70 as we're, we're looking at the biggest chance or the biggest likelihood for light sprinkles this morning. As we take a look at our current conditions in Champaign-Urbana, we're still at 54 degrees. Winds are out of the northeast at 10 miles per hour now. Relative humidity at 97% and the barometer slipping even more down to 29.8. 2 inches of mercury. Our Midwest Regional Satellite and Radar Composite shows a lot of cloud cover in the Midwest. It's clearing slowly back out in West Central Iowa, Nebraska, and Kansas. We're going to be left with varying thicknesses of cloud cover this morning. It's not out of the question that we'll see a peak or two of sunshine this morning, but it'll be afternoon, I think, late afternoon before we start to see some significant clearing in the WCIA3 viewing area. 43 in Chicago, 54 in Champaign. It's 58 degrees in St. Louis with the colder air off to our northwest. We're going to get a taste of the 30 tonight and tomorrow night. Today, though, not too bad. Mostly cloudy, a few sprinkles possible. 53 on the way to school, little sunshine, and 62 on the way home. A great-looking weekend. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we're going to see a big spat of sunshine, actually, a spurt. Uh, Friday and Saturday, both mostly sunny. We'll see a few more clouds on Sunday, but warming back to 70 degrees by Sunday afternoon. Here's the deal with severe weather at WCIA3. We don't hype it, and we won't hype it. If it's going to be a little windy, that's what we're going to tell you. We're not here to scare you. We're here to keep you informed. Robert Reese and the WCIA3 Storm Tracker Weather Team. Good morning. It's 6.03 and time for another check of Storm Tracker weather on the threes here on the morning show. Let's start with our Storm Tracker radar. Nothing going on that's really detectable on the radar. We do have some patchy pockets of light drizzle, mainly east of Interstate 57. We've also got some patchy areas of light fog around central Illinois, but nothing that's causing any problems. Skies have been mostly cloudy all night. That helped hold our temperatures up, uh, actually warmer than what we thought they were going to be. Uh, we should see highs around 50 today. We'll see a period of partly cloudy skies, but then clouds should be on the increase again late this afternoon afternoon and early this evening. Again, a high today of 50 with a south wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, we're going to drop down to about 40. Tomorrow's high even warmer, 54. A uh, pretty good chance for rain on Thursday. Maybe some thunder showers. Friday should be dry. Chance for showers to start the new year. Then we start cooling as we start next week. Uh, we're through a period of about three days there. We're going to see a chance of rain, a chance of light snow, and maybe a mix of the two on Tuesday. continues now on WCIA 3. You can stay on top of the forecast anytime, day or night, and from any location just by calling the WCIA 3 weather line. A 24-hour service of UC Bank updated by the Storm Tracker weather team. Just call Weatherline to get the current time, temperature, and forecast at 351-2900. WCIA 3 weather. It was weather where Robert first got to connect with those in central Illinois. From severe thunderstorms to winter weather and more, Robert was there. But Robert's love for weather gave him drive and energy every day. From chasing storms to helping us start our day, we could count on Robert for the forecast. The coolest air well to our northwest. We're at 37 degrees in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. He could tell you when it was going to get bad, you know, to the time. He would be in here early when he needed to. He would stay late. He would sacrifice time away from his family to make sure that everyone in Central Illinois was aware of what was going on. He did not take himself seriously, but he took the job seriously and he knew what weather meant to all the folks in Central Illinois. A lot of people turned to Robert in the morning to find out, you know, the, the regular daily forecast, but it was things when we had overnight flooding, yeah. right? What's closed, what's open, uh, what's going to happen in the, in the hours of the early morning that people had to be concerned about. He was bringing that leadership, uh, that desire to not only bring things to people in a thoughtful and intelligent way, but to do it in a way that they could plan their lives or to escape in the event of an emergency. He took that really seriously. And that, that weather rate award that we've received for a decade now started with him. The thing a lot of people don't know, when he was young, he was scared, scared to death of storms. Scared to death. And then he ended up becoming a weatherman. The kid caster was just great because it was a kid who was coming in from the area and he didn't have to know anything. Robert was showing him or her 
all the things that they needed to know. He came up with the idea and said, let's try this. And, you know, I think he even once said, you never know when we'll get, you know, a new staff member out of it. He just had a way of making weather fun. I think all the kids in school wanted to be like Robert Reese growing up. It was just um, a way for him to imprint his own love of life and curiosity um, back into the next generations. He took a lot of pride in the Kid Caster program, truly. Like that was um, arguably his pride and joy. The kids were always really nervous, but Robert had this way of just easing them in. It was really beautiful to watch. As chief meteorologist, Robert was the local weather leader in central Illinois. He informed us of weather that might impact our day, and he kept us safe when sirens blared. We thought we would honor his contributions to keeping us safe and share one of Robert's stories on tornadoes from the vault. Now, when a tornado warning has been issued for your area and you know a storm's approaching your home, it's important to take cover quickly. There are a lot of things that we've been told to do in the past that are simply a waste of time. Myth number one, if you're in a car and a tornado hits, seek shelter under an overpass. This video, which got airplay around the world, was largely responsible for this myth. Actually, the space under an overpass is an extremely dangerous place to be. The wind speed actually increases when forced through a small area. Lying in a ditch or a depression to avoid flying debris is your best bet. Myth number two. Close all your windows. Some people say you should close the windows. Others say open them. Both answers are wrong. Leave the windows alone. If a tornado hits your house, they are going to break open or closed. Don't put yourself in danger from flying glass and debris. Use that time getting to your safe place. Myth number three. If you have a basement, get on the wall next to the storm. Because if it blows, it's going to blow the house the other way. At one time, it was thought that the southwest corner of the basement was the best place to be, but studies have shown that it's actually the worst. If you have a basement, go to the center of the room and hide under a piece of sturdy furniture. If no basement is available, you can lay in the bathtub and cover yourself with a blanket for protection. Myth number four, industrial sites are protected. The way I understand it, the heat of the plants causes the tornadoes to lift up instead of go down, and so usually Tuscola gets saved and is not harmed by any tornadoes. Not true. While factories generate local heat islands, they have no impact or protective power in the event of a tornado. Myth number five. You can rely on tornado sirens to keep you warned. Tornado sirens are designed as outdoor warning systems. While you may be able to hear them indoors, a weather alert radio is the best way to get your alerts. Up next, I'll share a personal moment that changed my life almost 20 years ago when I first met Robert. And later, we'll look back at Robert's legacy that still stands true today. Stay with us on WCIA3 as we spend time remembering Robert 10 years later. Good morning. Welcome back to the morning show. It's 623. Time for Weather on the Threes. It's Friday. That means it's KidCaster Day. And with me today, Jacob Dickey from Gibson City. And he's here to be our Kids Caster today. Now, Jacob, you have got a really strong interest in the weather, don't you? Yep. So how long have you been into the weather? Oh, uh, I'd probably say about five years. About five years. And when we say interested, you're really interested. We'll talk more about that in a second. And we got a picture that came with your letter of you standing in front of your weather. This is in your room and you do this? Uh, well, it's downstairs in the basement. Wow. Little TV studio, got cameras and stuff? Uh, well, not that way, but like a weather station outside. And... Yeah. You know, I was a little upset. That map's better looking than some of the maps that I do. So, now you go to Gibson City. What, school, what grade are you in? Fifth. Fifth grade. How old are you? Ten years. Ten years old. And who's your teacher? Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith. All right. You came in from outside. It is cold out there, isn't it? Very. Take a while for the car to heat up this morning? Uh, maybe five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. That five minutes in this cold is too long, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Jacob Dickey, he's this week's Kid Caster. He's from Gibson City, and we're going to be hearing more from him in the next half hour. Great job. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Robert, don't you think Mr. Roberts would be proud of those hand-drawn maps? <laughs> you know, it's kind of a Absolutely. flashback to the 50s there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> neat. He told me he's saving his money, though, for a big computer system, right? Like ours? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Good call. All right. Thanks, Good Jacob. Good job, Jacob. Show sure, you're looking live at our Champagne Sky Cam. Clear skies across central Illinois this morning. Cold temperatures, too. We're looking at temps in the oh, teens and lots of wind chills in the single digits. We'll have more on that coming up in just a second, but not from me. It'll be from this week's Kids Casters, Jacob Dickey from Gibson City. Got up real early on a cold morning to come in and visit us, so thanks for coming in this morning. Thank you. Now, what grade are you in in Gibson City? Fifth grade. And you are how old? 
Ten years. Ten years old. Your teacher at school is Mrs. Brilson. Okay, I got to tell you, your teacher wrote us a letter recommending you for this, and that has never happened for a kidcaster. He does his own forecast in the base. Well, you know what? We'll just let him do the weather, and now you'll figure out why. Okay, why don't you start with our pinpoint forecast today? All right, what about our seven-day outlook? I'm going home. <laughs> our seven-day outlook looks as 28 for high today with mostly sunny skies. We do have some snow, a snow chance for tomorrow and on Sunday with highs in the mid-30s, lows in around 20 degrees. And on Monday, should get a little break, as you can see, 24 for a low, 35 for a high. Here. <laughs> That's my clicker. Robert, you should be worried. <laughs> wow, oh, that Jacob. was awesome, Jacob. You know, Jacob, Very the nice. practice in your basement you've got where you've got a weather wall all set up, it, it's, it's paid off for you. Yeah, so he's doing great. Looks like we have a future employee here, don't we? I think so. Awesome. Well Good done. Job, Jacob. Thank so, you. So, Jacob, how does it compare to doing it in your basement? Is yep. that the same? Yep. All right, great job, great job. Jacob Dickey from Gibson City. Ooh, I hope there's no one in line to do our jobs as well as that. <laughs> we could be in trouble. <laughs>
kind of just surreal knowing how many lives he touched and how many people felt uh, touched by him. What Robert meant to so many people and the difference he made in so many people's lives. I know it's been 10 years, but that still lives on. Robert's legacy is one that will not soon be forgotten in central Illinois. For more stories from and about him, you can head over to our website, wcia.com slash Robert. We'll keep content posted up there through the rest of this month. In addition, we'd love to hear your stories and memories about Robert. You can head to our Facebook page and share with us some there. Thanks for joining us on WCIA 3 this morning as we spend time remembering Robert 10 years later.